we're going to be drawing a neuron. Here is a micrograph picture of a neuron. This was taken under a microscope, a very, very high power microscope, a more powerful microscope than you might use in a science class. And this right here is the basic shape of the neuron. Um, they've got some, it labels some not letters here. It looks like D, S, P. I'm guessing S is for soma, which means the body, D for dendrite. And there's a little arrow pointing to this part, so I'm guessing this is the axon. So you can see that an actual photograph, picture of a neuron, it looks pretty complicated. It's got these, all these long stringy things. When you see a drawing, it looks much more simple. In fact, here, let me show you one more actual photograph. This is how complicated neurons can get. So this would really be confusing to try to draw. So we're going to draw kind of a cartoon neuron. This is similar to a picture you'll see in a textbook. This is your average, boring old average neuron. Uh, probably maybe one that connects the, uh, brings signals from your brain to your muscles and tells your muscles to move, maybe a motor neuron. It's going to go from here down to kind of like here. We're going to make it kind of a long skinny thing. So we'll, use, we'll maximize the paper and we'll use the, the uh, diagonal here to make our long axon. Now, let me show you. Neurons can look like many different shapes. And the one we're going to draw isn't exactly any of these. Some of them are bushy. Some of them kind of have long skinny parts in the middle, at the end. But the one we're going to draw is kind of like your average neuron. So make a very light circle right about here. And you're going to allow space here. We're going to branch out. We're going to make the dendrites go all here. So we want to make the main center approximately. This is where it's going to be the body or the soma. And then draw kind of a line going down here. It's going to look like a lollipop right now, basically with a really long stick. This is going to be the axon. And then we're going to make some thing little um, knobs branching out down there okay let's draw the body or the soma first this is going to be about the center now right here where it attaches to the stick here it's going to have kind of a little bit of a thicker part this is called the hillock we'll label that later and then you want to make some Uh, places where it's going to come out like this. All right, and you can see what we're imitating. Remember in this micrograph, you can see this is what we're trying to do, imitate some of these, how these go out. Okay, these are going to be the dendrites. So now there's no wrong way to draw these really. You do not have to copy exactly what I'm doing. All you need to do is make it branch out and kind of look like a tree branch because dendrite is Greek for tree branch. Okay, there's one. Now maybe this one might go off the page a little bit, I don't know or could bend and curve around this way maybe. Now, the shape of these would depend entirely on what it was doing in the body. And we don't really know what this is doing. This is doing anything in a body. It's sitting here being a cartoon, so we can kind of make it look however we want to. Maybe I'll just make this kind of, kind of short and stubby there, keep it on the page. Barely, there we go. And Maybe that one will go behind there. Remember yours does not have to look like this. Don't try to copy every little move I'm making. You make yours look branchy however you want to. It 
doesn't have to have the same number as me or anything like that. Make one more down here. Now what are these again? These are the dendrites. So let's label these. An arrow. Dendrites, which is Greek for tree branches, right? Okay, let's put the nucleus in. This is a cell, of course, like any cell in your body. It's got a nucleus. So let's put a big circle there for the nucleus. And what's inside the nucleus? Mostly it's DNA. Now you're not going to see that nice double helix shape. You're just going to see some kind of messy, the DNA will look all messy like that. That'll represent the DNA. And you can write DNA in there if you want to. All right, and outside of the nucleus is this stuff. It kind of looks like these, these long folded tube-like things called the endoplasmic reticulum. If you just kind of want to make like lines like that. And I'm just going to put E... R, which stands for endoplasmic reticulum. And if you really want to get accurate, you want to make some little dots along some of these, which stand for ribosomes. And the ribosomes are the little factories that actually make make the uh, make little proteins and things. They're little factory workers, and they all line up. Some of the endoplasmic reticulum has them, and some doesn't. I'll kind of leave some of each. And this is the same as you'd find in any cell in the body. All cells have this. Okay, I can even erase a little bit of my guidelines here because I don't really need this anymore. That's why you keep your guidelines really light because you might want to erase them later. Okay, now this here is a special name. It's called the hillock which means like little hill, this little bump here that's going to go down. Now, the axon, which is like a little electrical highway, is going to go like this, but we're going to cover some of it. Don't make it too dark because it's going to be uh, have some wrapper things covering it. Let's see, uh, also inside the, the cell body here, let's put some mitochondria. I like to kind of make them like this. They're like little jelly bean shaped things, sort of, with some lines going like that. If you look inside, they kind of have these little line things on them. So those are going to be mitochondria, and they are the things that help generate energy. All cells have them, and the neuron is a cell, so it has them. It'll have other little parts, too. It'll have these little pancake things called Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies help make the little proteins and they get things to where they're supposed to go. Golgi bodies, it's named after someone named Golgi or Golgi maybe. Some people say Golgi. And it would have some other little things, lysosomes and some other little parts like that. Okay, and then let's go down here and um, start making our little wrappers. This is like an electrical wire. You can imagine this is like a piece of, of copper wire going along. And as the electricity travels, you don't want the electricity leaking out. You want to keep it inside the wire. Can you imagine if you went to plug something in in your house and there wasn't that nice uh, rubber wrapping around the wire and the electricity could just go anywhere um, so we, it's really nice that it, we keep it inside the wires with that rubber. So this is kind of like the rubber coating on your electrical wires at home. Of course, it's not made out of rubber. We're going to make it, imagine, like little um, little cylinders. Like that, all along it. Now, wherever you have a gap between them, that's where you're going to see the axon peeking through. 
All right, that's where you're actually going to see the axon. And then you're not going to see it in these things. These things are going to cover it up so you can't see like that. Now, here's a little trick. Let's make these things look round a little bit. You can kind of shade them a little bit like this because um, they are sort of round. They go around, they wrap around actually. Um, they're more like a big sheet that's rolled around and around and around. So we'll shade those a little bit. And instead of rubber, they're made out of a substance called myelin, M-Y-E-L-I-N. And you can call it a sheath, a covering, a myelin sheath. And in the body, these things are actually alive. It's like living rubber. It's actually a cell. In the brain, they're just a wrapping made by another cell, but in the body, they're actually cells. So we could give them a nucleus, actually, couldn't we? Because their cells are gonna have all these parts. They're living cells. And they're called Schwann cells, named after Mr. Schwann, who first discovered them. And the way I remember that they're in the body and not the brain is there used to be an old bicycle named a Schwinn. When I was a kid, we all rode Schwinn bicycles. So you, to ride a bike, you use your muscles, your motor neurons. So that reminds me, Schwann, Schwinn, you find these in the body where your muscles are. Okay, and then these little gaps in here have a very special function. They are called nodes of Ranvier, Ranvier, R-A-N-V-I-E-R, -E named of course after Mr. Ranvier, who discovered those. And they um, perform a special function in the uh, transmission of the electrical signal. The electrical signal starts here and goes this way, but it actually can hop from node to node, and this video is not going to go into that, but this is what these things are. That's why they're important, is the electrical signal can just go skip, 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 and that way it can travel faster. It doesn't have to go all the way through here. Okay, now let's draw the end. Now, these things might look like dendrites on the end, but they're not. They're just called the ends of the axon. Well, they don't really have a super fancy name for them. They have little knobbies on the end, and yours don't have to be exactly like this. You can invent your own shapes, but they have little knobs on the end called synaptic knobs, and we'll just do a real quick close-up of one of these in just a minute. Okay. These are called... Um, Terminal knobs because they're at the end. Knobs at the end just means knobs at the end of the axon. They're actually part of the axon. They're not dendrites. So these things uh, send out the signal. So we're going to circle one right here, and then we're going to do going to make an arrow going like this to show you. In this circle, we're going to show you what's in the circle. You could see it even closer up. It's going to look like this. Draw a giant knob like that. And then some little bubbles, basically. And inside of these, put some dots. And this is going to stand for little chemicals little tiny chemicals called neurotransmitters. You can label those neurotransmitters. And they have the very important job of carrying the electrical signal from this neuron. They'll carry it on to the next neuron. In fact, we can even make one of these ready to... The way they get out is they come 
and they touch the edge like this and then they kind of become part of the edge it's like two bubbles joining and then they kind of or uh, an oil drop touches another one and they just kind of merge this thing kind of just merges with the edge and then the chemicals spill out like that or sometimes it can uh, then it can kind of disappear or it could reform um, and go back up in here and we're going to put some I think there's actually mitochondria that lurk here there's other organelles there and then one last thing is we'll put just as a reminder the, the thing that triggers these put CA plus plus two calcium calcium CA plus two calcium atoms or ions waiting to get in and when these go in that signals these things to touch the edge open up and release their chemicals so that's what these little things are right here that's the little and they're just called knobs they don't have a big fancy word for it okay we have everything labeled this is just called terminal end of the axon got the dendrites we've got the body if you want a fancy word you can use fancy Greek word soma the body we could label the nucleus got DNA mitochondria Golgi bodies the hillock myelin sheath which are sometimes actually made of living cells called Schwann cells the nodes of Ranvier and the synaptic knob and that's the basics of a neuron